Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. This video I've actually tried to record about five times and every time I try and record it, it just ends up being like a mess of just thoughts and really not clear on how I want it to be. So I've kind of decided that this is my last flipping attempt <laughs> and if it doesn't, like if it's not clear, then it's not clear and that's just how it is. And sometimes I think when I'm trying to explain explain how I see things. I see things as messy anyway, so like I am trying to explain a mess. There's no easy, simple way to explain something like human behaviour because there are so many factors that come into it anyway. So I try my best, but sometimes I suck. <laughs> so <laughs> sorry guys. But as you've picked up from the thumbnail and from the title, Today, I wanted to talk to you about awareness. There's lots of people that are all like, I'm so woke, <laughs> like talking about awareness. I guess I wanted to break it down to like the process and how awareness is the kind of starting point for growth and for change. That's basically what this video is about. I mean, you can just stop now and cut out if you're just like, oh yeah, cool. Uh, um, <laughs> but I am gonna go into a bit more detail about that. So I wanna go back a little bit and mention the video that I did months ago now, talking about transactional analysis and specifically looking at the way that we process the world around us is automatically ingrained into part of being human is this quest for understanding and knowledge. And as a child, that presents itself as this kind of really cutely named little professor element where we are seeking out to understand. So the most obvious example of that is when you have children who will ask their parents a bazillion different questions that you can barely get your head around, or they, as babies, are just into everything, you know, picking everything up, putting stuff in their mouths, trying to eat it, and touching everything. That's a kind of really visual representation of what that little professor is. But little professor is not just relevant to children, although within transactional analysis, it comes underneath the kind of child bit. Those aren't kind of, this is what adults do and this is what children do like these are elements of everybody whether you're a child or an adult you'll quite often see children go into parent mode with their friends for example or their dolls just the same as you will see adults in child mode if you like and often what we call in psychology the free child that's a mixture of the natural child and the little professor that freedom is what we seek in order to live an authentic life and that's not a child you know you could say that's free person you know because it is kind of it's, it's not just exclusive to children so in terms of awareness there is this innate curiosity about the world that we are born with and we just want to find stuff out. That's just kind of how we are. And it's when you learn stuff and you become aware of stuff that you then grow as a human being. And I guess why I'm bringing that up, and it's slightly on tangent, is because issues can arise when you are not seen, heard and recognised in that little professor mode. As a child, if you're exploring your environment and you're not supported in that, as if in, you know, your caregivers don't take an interest, you can stop doing that. And that bleeds into like attachment theory and how children can learn that them seeking knowledge is not important and is not a kind of useful or wanted characteristic by their caregivers, therefore there's no point in doing that. And the reason why I mention that is that quite often you see adults who are not able to grow as people. You can kind of say, oh, they're just not, they're just not curious. They just don't want to know. They don't want to grow in that way. And actually sometimes it can be much deeper than that. It can be because that element of them has almost been kind of squashed out because it wasn't recognised as a positive trait to have. Awareness and seeking awareness is not just rooted in intelligence and I think that's something that gets misunderstood a lot is people think that it's only a certain type of person and they are an intelligent person who researches, who reads, who wants to find out about the world and actually that's not the case. Basically uh, I guess what I wanted to talk to you guys about was that 
the very beginning of growth and the beginning of change comes from awareness and we cannot become aware without being curious and everything is obviously intrinsically linked throughout everything because it always is but becoming aware of things means you can choose differently whereas if things are just systemic within you and you have no awareness of them you are just going to react to everything in line with those things without the awareness that things could be different i don't know if that makes sense and people love to chuck out this term of awareness all of the time it's almost like at, the, at this point in time it's kind of like a, a fun buzzword that people like to throw out there and ultimately there are many forms of awareness you can be inherently aware of for example your own trauma but not aware of anybody else's you know you can have this awareness of issues that are going on in the world but no awareness of how that comes into you and what part you play within that. So awareness is always going to be limited. And the only way that you can grow that is through education, through research and through some really deep, hard, reflective work. And whether or not that's supported with a therapist or whether or not that is supported in other ways, it's kind of your your choice and your decisions to make. But it's important to recognise that awareness is stepping away from the inherent natural responses that are rooted in previous experiences, systemic and societal influences as well. And all of these things contribute to behaviours and becoming aware of those things and the way that they're leading you or the energy that they're giving you or the negativity or whatever that's really where freedom lives. <laughs> this sounds like such a kind of almost kooky concept for me to try and explain. If you see human behaviour almost as a jigsaw puzzle, then if you can't see all the pieces, if some of the pieces are hidden under the table, or they fall on the floor, or they're in someone else's hands, if you can't see all of those pieces, you're never going to be able to put together the puzzle. And I suppose that awareness, that seeing all the pieces, just because you can see the pieces also doesn't mean that you can make the puzzle. This is going real on the metaphor. But life, I suppose, it's not in having the final picture in front of you. It's in becoming aware of where the pieces are and seeing what they look like and seeing if they fit and putting them together. And it's the joy that you take from that or whether or not that seems like a total waste of time with no meaning whatsoever, because ultimately all you're focused on is what this is going to look like. Oh, see, that's quite a good metaphor now. <laughs> I had a traumatic experience in my childhood, although obviously it happened around me, I knew what was happening. I did not talk about that whatsoever with anyone until about two years ago. Now, since that happened, I obviously, you know, I left home, I bought a house, I was in a long-term relationship, I had two children, I lived my life the way that I thought uh, I was meant to, and I carried on with life, completely just putting the past in the past, and I would have periods of total depression. So I would go through cycles of being so low that I couldn't get out of bed. I was prescribed antidepressants for a period of time, I was constantly on sick leave. I was seeing counsellors at least, I'd say every couple of years, I would go and have some counselling, usually through my GP. And I went through this period of just thinking I was just really, really low. I had a skin condition that would continually flare up all the time. And I had massive self-esteem issues. And there was lots of other stuff going on, but it was rooted in what I thought was depression. Now, two years ago, when I plucked up the courage to seek out a therapist and actually tell her the truth and really open up to her, which is absolutely terrifying and also completely and utterly transformative, when I actually spoke about this incident and since then, the awareness of that and the knowledge that I have, I now know that for the past 15 years of my life or so, I've had PTSD. 
Now, PTSD is a constant awareness all the time, a constant living on edge, a constant looking out for trauma because your body is basically prepared for that trauma to happen again at any moment. So it's a constant vigilance against trauma. And what can happen when that's sustained all the time, if your body is constantly on that edge, you're constantly experiencing basically a stress response to everything. And what will happen is you'll have periods where your body just cannot cope with that level of energy that's required. It's such a high level of energy that's required to keep you that vigilant all the time, to constantly be looking out all the time for threats, constantly be managing things. Basically, you're in this really tight circle within the PTSD cycle of looking for trauma, perceiving trauma sometimes when there isn't any, and then managing the threat. And you're in that tiny section of the bigger circle of PTSD with no resolution to it. And what will happen is there will come a point where your body shuts down and it cannot cope with that sustained level of stress, basically. And those were the periods where I could not get out of my bed. Just I couldn't function. And it was never depression. It was PTSD. I used to have really bad anxiety going to new places. It was PTSD. And now that I have that awareness, I can work through it. And before I lived in total ignorance of it, which meant that there was no way that I was possibly going to be able to change it. You know, the GPs, everybody thought that I had depression. So I treated depression. I did not treat PTSD. I didn't, I didn't have that awareness. I didn't have that knowledge. I could not manage it. And it was being secure enough to feel able to question, you know, to be able to sit with someone and feel like my little professor could come up and go, this happened to me and I want to learn about it. I want to work it out. I want to know what this means. I want to know why this happened. And asking lots of questions and feeling safe to be able to do that, which then led to the awareness of what was actually going on for me and how that has shaped my life, basically. And what I would say in terms of awareness in the world these days is things like, if you don't know what's going on, you cannot challenge things. You can't try something new. You can't have understanding. You can't have empathy. You can't do those things because you don't know. One thing that I'm seeing so much in terms of positivity is people are educating themselves because they're becoming aware. So I don't think that's a bad attempt at explaining what I mean about awareness. I could go into meditation and stuff as well and how that can help but I think that's probably something for another video. I hope that wherever you are, whatever you're doing, that you're staying safe and you're keeping well. Please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel and I will catch you guys in the next one.